What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can integrate CG lights into your live action shots in order to relight or simply just add a stylistic touch to your footage. Now, before we get started, I should mention that the lighting concept that I show in this video is probably the simplest way you can do this. However, depending on the complexity of your shot, you may need to take a few more steps in order to gather the data necessary to get the CG light to interact with your live action footage a bit more effectively. This specific technique is the exact same effect that I used in our searching helicopter shot where the spotlight of the helicopter interacts with the geometry of the train and I think it was pretty effective. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is the shot that we are going to add some uh, extra spotlights to. So this is going to be the starting point of our tutorial. As you can see, I've 3D tracked our footage here, and I'm not going to cover the 3D tracking process in this specific tutorial. However, as I mentioned, I do have a tutorial on this exact concept, so I'll put a link to that in the description. So this will be our starting point. Uh, it's just a basic scene setup here. We're rendering everything in the Cycles rendering engine, and also make sure that under Film, you check the transparent checkbox for your render. But uh, this is our starting point. No uh, HDRI or any light added yet just a camera and then our footage is our background so what I want to do for this shot is just have some spotlights shining down on our street here so I'm just gonna create one where the street lamp is and then I might add a few more in the uh, foreground and background of the shot as well now as you can probably guess the main thing we want to do in order to create this spotlight effect is recreate the general geometry of the shot where we want the spotlight effect to be so what I'm going to do since we want to add the spotlight here on the street is I'm just going to to recreate the geometry of this bridge here and this street. So to do that, I'll just add a plane to our scene. So I'll go ahead and press Shift A, add a plane here, and I'll just scale it up a bit. And I wanna make sure that it's lined up with some of our tracking markers where our street would be. So I know that these tracking markers are where our sidewalk is. So I'll use these two right now. So here's one, and just bring this up. And then, yeah, this is already pretty close here. But I just want to generally line up our shot. So something like that should be pretty good for our sidewalk. Uh, as far as the general geometry goes, I'm just going to rotate this a little bit and line up our edges. Bring this over here. And depending on your shot, you may need to be more or less accurate than what I'm doing right now. But we just want to line up our sidewalk here to our live action shot. There we go. All right, so something like this should be pretty good. I'm just going to extend it along our pathway here like so and make sure it's aligned as best we can. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Now we want to go to edit mode real quick. And then I want to grab these two points where the edge of our bridge would be. And then I'm just going to extrude them up just like this concrete barrier here like so. And then I'll extrude it out as well. So I'm just pressing E on my keyboard here and uh, we just want to create that lip as if it's the edge of the bridge like this all right so now we have that general geometry we want to grab the edges by our curb here so i'll grab that edge and then i'll also grab this edge and we'll go to camera view and then i'll just extrude this down on the z-axis to create that lip and then extend it over across our street and since we're going to add the lights just to the left side of the street this should be enough data to gather the lighting in a way that we can overlay on top of our live action shot all right, so I'll go back to object mode here. And now as you can see here, if we go to rendered view, this is what we have, just a very basic outline of our shot. And before we continue, I also want to create the uh, street sign here. So I'll go ahead and press shift A, we'll add a cylinder and I'll just kind of place this where our street sign is. So scale it up, just place it right here. Hopefully you guys can see this it's a little bit dark on my screen here. I think the footage is just a little dark, but get the idea. Just recreate the geometry of your shot and this uh, this tracking marker here was where our street light is so we'll go ahead and place our street light where that marker is like this and then we'll resize it here so we've got to scale it up a bit that should be pretty good and then I'll also I'll go ahead and duplicate this cylinder and scale it down on the Z axis then rotate it on the Y axis 90 degrees and scale it up here and I'm going to use this as our uh, street sign here like so again just generally recreating the geometry of our shot as best we can 
doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be good enough to recreate some general lighting. All right, so this should be pretty good. Now, if we play through our shot, we have something like this. And I can see that our edges on this back side of our bridge aren't lining up perfectly. So I'll go ahead and go to edit mode, grab these two edges and just bring them up like this. All right, so now let's go ahead and add some lights to our scene. So I'm just going to use some spotlights, but again, depending on your effect, you can use a variety of different sources. But I'll go ahead and press Shift A, we'll add a light spot, and I'll just place this right above our uh, street light here. And I'll scale this down like so. And if we go to render view, we have something like this now. So not a bad little effect, just wanna place it where we want it like this. And now we have something like this, which I think is going to be a pretty nice effect for our street. I might go to our light settings here and just increase the power to 1000. Oop, that might be a little bit too much. Let's see, maybe 100. There we go. And I'm going to increase the blend so that there's a little bit more feathering on our spotlight like this. And you can also increase the radius of that blend as well. So for example, if we increase this, you'll see that our light blends a little bit more into our shot. We don't want to do that too much, maybe 0.52. It kind of depends on you, but maybe, uh, I'll maybe try 0.65 and then dial down the spot size a bit. This might take a bit of trial and error, but um, this should be pretty good. I'm going to increase the power to 200. All right, so this is looking pretty nice. Now I'm also going to change the color of this light. For this specific shot, the environment is generally pretty uh, cool here. It's pretty blue, but you can see we have some orange street lights in the background, probably some sodium vapor lights. So I'm going to make these spotlights a little bit warmer as well. So I'll just change the color here to a warmer color, something like this. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Again, I might increase the intensity here to 400. And yeah, we'll go with this for now. And now what I want to do is just duplicate this spotlight in a few more areas of our street here. So I'll go ahead and press Shift D, grab this, move this down our street a little bit, somewhere over here, and then I'll duplicate it once more. And I'll add one in the foreground as well, something like this maybe. And now we have three different spotlight effects, probably pretty saturated, but um, we'll play around in the compositing process and uh, see what we have. All right, so before we render this out and get into the compositing process, one thing I want to do is on this view layer for our spotlights, I want to turn off the other lights in our scene so that we can isolate what these specific spotlights that we've added are doing. So to do that, I'll just go to our world properties here and I'll just bring down the strength of our sky to zero. And now as you can see here, everything else is black except for where our lights are uh, hitting our geometry here. Another way you could do this if you have multiple view layers is you can just go to view layer properties and you can scroll down here to filter and then you can turn off the environment uh, lighting. So uh, as you can see, if I turn that off and then turn up the background, you can see that the background isn't doing anything on this view layer. So if you have more elements in your scene, you can do that and not have to worry about relighting those other elements as well. But anyways, guys, let's give this a quick render and start compositing these lights on top of our footage and see if we have to make any tweaks as well. So I'll go ahead and go to our render properties tab here. And for our render samples, I'm just going to make the max samples, maybe 34 for the sake of this tutorial. We'll leave the denoising on as well as the motion blur. Again, make sure transparent is selected. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty good for this view layer. I'll go ahead and rename this. We'll call this spotlights. Just so we have a little bit more clarity in our compositor if we had more layers, for example. And I'll go ahead and save our project as well. And now I'll just go to render and render image and let's get into our compositing process. All right guys, so here is our render and composite right out of Blender with the default node compositing tree that the camera tracking settings give you. And as you can see here, not what we want, but you can probably tell what we're going to do here. We're going to use this data from our render in order to tell Blender what part of the footage to brighten up and uh, give the appearance as if there were some spotlights in the scene. Now, obviously this one back here doesn't really make sense. There's no really place where this light could be coming from, but hopefully you can suspend your disbelief for a second here for the sake of this tutorial and just grab onto the concept for now. But anyways, I'll go ahead and close our window here and we'll go to our compositing tab. And this is our compositing node setup right now, but we are going to change a few things. And what we have here, our top three nodes are just our movie clip and our bottom node here being overlaid on top of our movie clip is our spotlight render. So you can see here, if I go and create another output node, this is the data that we have gathered from our render. 
All right, so let's use this data in order to brighten up different parts of the footage and emulate some street lights on top of our footage. So to do this, I want to delete our alpha overnode. And instead of using an alpha overnode, we're just going to use a standard mix node and play around with the blend mode. So I'll go ahead and press shift A. We'll add a color mix and we'll put our footage in the top input of our mix node. And then we'll take our render into the bottom input. And then we'll take our image and send it to our viewer and composite node. So right now we're mixing our two inputs together, but rather than mixing them, we're going to actually use the overlay blend mode. And there are a variety of different blend modes you can use, so I do recommend you play around with them. But the most straightforward one in my experience is just the overlay node here. So I'll go ahead and select that, and you can kind of tell what's happening here. I do want to dial back the factor a bit to maybe uh, maybe 0 0.408 and you can see kind of what's happening here we're just overlaying the render on top of our footage and you can see these uh light is pretty subtle here however in this specific live action shot these lights wouldn't really be playing that much because there's still a little bit of ambient daylight in the scene so at this point it's time to composite your elements together in a way that makes sense so i might just bring up the brightness of these lights a little bit by increasing the overlay node factor and by increasing this factor you can see that this specific specific blend mode is actually darkening down the rest of our footage as well. So it's a nice way you can just blend these two elements together. Now, if you just want to overlay the spotlights on top of our footage, you could use the blend mode add, for example. And now, as you can see here, it's directly overlaid on top of our footage. Now, this is where it can get a little bit complex because in this specific example, we've only recreated the geometry of our scene. However, if we recreated the geometry as well as the photorealistic textures in a material on this render, we would actually be able to overlay this with a lot more precision but in that case we'd have to almost rebuild the entire left side of the street here in the computer so the way i'm doing it in this tutorial is a little bit faster because we're not actually having to reproject textures and create the materials of the entire left side of the bridge here so instead of using add or some of these other blend modes we're just going to use the overlay effect and it blends in everything together a bit more seamlessly i'll maybe uh bring this down to 0.4 we don't want the uh footage to get too too dark so this is kind of where you get into compositing and you have to use your judgment here so maybe 0.35 on the factor if we bring down the factor to say 0.25 you can see that the footage is not quite as dark. However, the actual street lights aren't showing up as well. But to resolve that, what we can do is just add a quick RGB node here and increase the brightness of our spotlight input. And now as you can see here, they're playing a little bit more. They're going a little bit green here, but we can color correct them as well. So maybe I'll just uh, add a color balance node here and make them a little more warm to match our footage a bit better. There we go something like this and I might increase the overlay a bit there we go that's looking a little bit nicer and at this point it's a matter of compositing everything together as you desire something like this is not bad we increase the overlay a bit more you can see they're playing a bit more now let's try 0.7 0.7 is not too bad. All right, so obviously depending on your shot, you may have to composite things together a little bit differently. However, you can see the reason why we might do this kind of effect. You can see that the actual bridge geometry is being lit up in a way that makes sense. So for example, if we crank this up a lot, you can see that this top part is brighter than down here. So this is just a nice way you can uh, play around with relighting your shots. So at this point, it's just a matter of your taste in compositing. I might add some blur to our shot as well just to blend everything together a bit and uh, maybe some color correction on our final shot as well to blend everything together. You could also go back into uh, your 3D scene and play around with the intensity as well as the color of your light. I think our, I think the saturation of our spotlights is a little much, so I'll just dial this back a bit. So I'll do the same thing on these. I'll just make them all the same source here. So we can definitely do something like this, or say you want the spotlights to uh, maybe bleed out a little bit more, you know, kind of feather into the scene a bit. So we could maybe increase the radius to say one, and then bring down the spot size to say 20. So now it's a little bit softer edges here, then I might increase the power to 1000 and give it another render here. All right, so now we have something like this, which uh, obviously isn't ideal. We've uh, color corrected it too much for the way we uh, changed our source. Bring this back a little bit, see what this gives us. 
There we go, something like this. Obviously a little bit much. I think for this specific shot, it'd serve us to keep everything fairly subtle, but this is the general concept here, guys. Now, depending on the surface that your light is supposed to be interacting with, again, you may need to recreate this environment in a more accurate way. Say, for example, this uh, street here was a highly reflective surface. You might want to recreate that data in the computer as well. So, you know, maybe add a new material to your ground plane and, you know, make it something more glossy with less of a roughness so that you're gathering data with maybe less roughness, for example. And again, depending on the way your data is gathered, you may want to export different passes. So for example, we could export a glossy direct pass, which is just the direct lighting on our glossy material, which is what we did for the spotlight hitting the train in our last visual effects breakdown. But again, this is just about mimicking the data of our live action shot inside of the computer and then adding whatever CZ elements you want to the shot, exporting that data, and then compositing it all together in a way that makes sense. I think the main thing that's throwing this off right now is just that the edges of our shadows are just so hard here. So probably what we can do, perhaps we can make these a little bit softer. So maybe, maybe bring up our spot size a bit so that it's spread out a bit more. We'll try something like this render it out. And after rendering with a little bit of tweaking, we got this final result. And obviously it's not perfect guys, but hopefully the concept can help you guys in your own projects. All I've added here, I've just played around with the color balance, the RGB curves. I've added some more blur to blend it into the scene a bit better. And then some color correction as well here, right before our viewer note. But anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel. Subscribe if you're interested and we'll see you in the next video.